Okay, and I uh, hope everybody's here. Put out the link over on Facebook. Hopefully everybody got that, and we'll see if more people tune in. Right now we got about 75 people hanging out in the Google Plus live chat. And, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in last night. If you tuned in last night, stayed up all night with me. Uh, today, had to go to work and worked all day, and now here I am back again. Now, for those of you who don't know, I do entry-level carpentry and tree removal, and St. Louis got creamed last night, so we got another three to four weeks' worth of work. That's, I guess, some silver lining to that dark cloud, silver iodide lining to that dark cloud. Now, let's just get right into it. Um, it is 11.30 p.m. Central Time on Monday, April 28th, 2014, going into the 29th, and you know the whole country now knows about what's been going on. That's good news that many people are now aware of the severe weather situation. Unfortunately, yesterday, Arkansas going up into Missouri and even east all the way across Arkansas towards Tennessee, multiple tornadoes, over 20 people reported killed so far and that could that number could go much higher depending on what goes on right now as I'm talking they issued tornado warnings just southwest of Birmingham Alabama this is downtown Birmingham right here and let me explain what you're looking at here the dark red areas are actual tornado warnings the light red areas the pinkish areas are tornado watch areas and the dark yellow are severe thunderstorm warnings and the difference between a warning and a watch, of course, the watch is keep an eye out for it, could develop at any time, but the warning is actual either rotation developed or spotted funnel clouds by a professional trained storm spotter. So you can see this area here. Um, the best news of the day so far is that we went down from 11 tornado warnings about an hour ago down to now what I see is four here, and that would be across southern Alabama, going through central Alabama over Birmingham and then east northeast over eastern Tennessee okay so if you live anywhere in the line of these storms these storms let me go ahead and uh, show this to you with no interference we will animate this up and you can see which direction these are heading these are pulling east by northeast and then eastward as well so you need to be aware in let's say central Georgia going north by northeast to the Tennessee border that this storm here that's producing multiple tornadoes, damaging winds, large hail, is heading in that general direction. All these are identified by the computer. Each place mark here is a different storm ID. The computer uses the radar, identifies what's inside the storm, whether it's hail or damaging winds and uh, or rotation, and then assigns that. So we've got three separate tornado warning watch areas which there are possible tornadoes actually developed and you can see two on the map here and the third uh, just fell off the map down here to the south turn on the National Weather Service alerts and watches they've got four warning areas so the computer detects rotation National Weather Service spots a funnel cloud and they put them both into the warning and that generates the warning for your area now I put out a bulletin over on my Facebook page if you guys follow me on Facebook and we had a couple things happen last night first of all I did two live streams and we're showing you guys that the storm started to rotate to the north. And let me go ahead and open up this graphic here so you guys can see it on screen. This is from College of DuPage, and we'll go look at the animated version in a minute. But this was just put out to all my viewers. Here's the storm in the center of the country. It came down through the southwest, dropped snow down here in Los Angeles and around the San Diego area, then pulled back up here to the northeast where it put a whole bunch of snow up here in north and south Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, even reaching down to the Kansas border. That was yesterday. Now, the storm has stalled. It rolled due north, fell back west because of the counterclockwise rotation of the storm, and is now pretty much still in the same spot. And you can see right down here towards the bottom that a new line of storms is going to be dragged up from the southwest to the northeast, most likely tomorrow unless something changes, which I don't think it will. Now to see that, let's go over here. Here's College of DuPage, and I'm going to turn on the color enhancement. So this is showing us yesterday into today. Last night when I did my updates, it was starting to roll north right there, and then today, look what happened. It stalled out right here, and maybe I can show it to you in a better way. Okay, again, this is the vibrant view, but it's just the same thing. It's infrared, and it's showing us the uh, cloud height and cloud temperature. 
So you can see this massive blast off that happened last night. Then the second one today, which is hitting the south right now down here. And then the next round being pulled back up out of, uh, looks like New Mexico, Texas, starting to get a little bit heavier. We can go back over to weather.com and let's go ahead and animate this up. And you can see all the snow up here to the north. There's multiple winter weather warnings issued again in the same spot. So that kind of lets you know that the storm is in the same spot. The winter weather warnings to the north are in the same spot. Now this is loading new images, so it's flashing a little bit here. Okay, you see this green precipitation starting to break out here over south Oklahoma. And you see the rotation of the storm not going anywhere anytime soon. We're looking at another 24 hours at least as the storm presses eventually east by northeast. You know, I wish I could give you some good news on this. I haven't heard any weather forecasters talking about another major severe weather outbreak tomorrow. But as it looks right now, it looks like it's taking another gulp off the south and going to blast it right up over these southern states again tomorrow. So you can follow the line of these storms. Again, it's pretty easy to see. Let's go over to the live weather feeds. And let's see which view shows this the best. We might have to look at the water vapor. And then we'll go into the harp rings and what happened last night that I believe caused this storm to rotate here. This one should show it pretty well. Okay, this is going to take a long time to load, of course. Okay, so that was what we dealt with last night, the first red blast. Here's what we're dealing with right now, and then you see it. You, it's no, make no mistake, this is probably going to be another severe weather situation going throughout, let's say, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Just by the track that this is taking now, it's going to scoop in and pull up to the north. Let's hope it's not as severe as Obviously, what's going on right now is extremely severe. Let's hope that the temperatures are going to determine how severe this is. To see the temperatures, we can. there's several different charts you can go to. I'm trying to use ones that you guys can just easily click through. So let's go over to IntelliCast. And the links are down below, so you guys can follow along. You can turn on the temperatures, and you'll see. Just like yesterday, we have temperatures of 20 and 30 degrees behind the storm and 60 to 70 degrees out in front of the storm. That's a 10 degree drop from what it was yesterday, 70 to 80 degrees yesterday. Now we're looking at the 50s to 60s. That's cooled off because of the storms itself that blew through. So what can we expect? We can expect this to curl back around, bring another blast of cold down here to the south. We are already seeing the precipitation start at the Texas-Oklahoma border. It's just a matter of how severe is it going to be tomorrow. So. Have a plan ready and be prepared just in case. Let's go ahead and go back over the tornado warnings. I'll turn off these temperatures really quick and see if they've done any new updates on the tornadoes. All right. They have moved the tornado warning over Birmingham, and they moved it directly over downtown. Let me go ahead and click on this. That's for the next five minutes, eight minutes still, the cell is, it looks extremely strong, definitely moving due north, it looks like. So you're going to have to be aware just north of Birmingham. That's not going to expire anytime soon. There's two other tornado warnings just up here to the northeast with the next cell. Look which way it's going to go. It's passing up here to the northeast. Let me animate this up. All right, that's going to pass over the north tip of Georgia and go right up here along the Tennessee border, uh, bordering with North Carolina. And, of course, we've got the highway that goes through there, and uh, we've got several other, actually, smaller towns right along the highway, and that's the direction it's taking. There's another tornado up here to the north now. That was moved slightly as well. That's in Tennessee. East Coast, tomorrow, you can see what's going on here. This, as it passes north, will get a slightly less severe. I would expect the National Weather Service, because of all the tornadoes that were already generated with this system, will be issuing tornado watch areas up here to the north. That includes New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, possibly even the New England states. 
It really depends on how much this dies out over the next several hours. Now, we're going into overnight. That's good news. Of course, the, the storms de-intensify somewhat overnight, but, you know, it's already midnight, so we only have five hours before morning rush hour, and it looks like that's going to be the time that the northern part of this system is getting up here, let's say, towards south of Pittsburgh. Um, the storm itself is going to throw this up the east coast. It's not going to curl all this severe weather back around up here to the northwest. It's going to drop this like a heavy load. It's going to drop it off the side of the arm that's spinning. So it's going to take it, spin it up the east coast, and then it's going to take the next draw, which it already is. Interestingly enough, these right here, these freeze watches, were issued last night and this is what the National Weather Service was expecting to happen last night was this storm to move further east and pull the cold down here to the south. But you can see inside the freeze warning area, there's no freezing occurring. Only at the mountainous elevations here in Texas, it's all green. It's all unfrozen precipitation. And we can turn on the temperatures again just to show you guys. fifty, fifty six, fifty four. So the storm is doing something that I guess the National Weather Service wasn't really expecting, which was to stall out here over north Nebraska, over let's say from Des Moines west to Omaha. The center of the storm just hanging out here now. Now eventually it's going to get pushed over the next twenty four hours. That's good news. There's another large system coming in from the Pacific Northwest, brought some damaging winds and strong cells up here in Seattle uh, along the west coast. That was last night when we were looking at the storms. Of course, now you don't see any strong cells or anything like that marked. But let's go ahead and turn on um, Titan Storm Tracking. Right, okay, so we're not even seeing any strong cells come in over the Pacific Northwest yet. That's good news. There's a large low pressure system up here off the Northwest and uh, that will eventually cause more severe weather for us over the next couple days, let's say three to four days, but right now that lag in between is good news because this, this storm is going to move itself on up the east coast over the next 24 to 48 hours. And let's see, Titan Storm Tracking just refreshed. We've got another couple multiple tornado detections. Let's just turn this on so you guys can see it. Uh, the new tornado detection is now just south of Asheville, and that's North Carolina. So North Carolina, right along the border, as we were warning here over on my Facebook page and uh, multiple times now, you're now seeing the brunt of the front of this storm. Behind it, multiple tornado warnings. Um, let's see. We have confirmed damaging winds now over Birmingham. The computer's detecting damaging winds. That indicates 60 miles an hour or greater. So that's occurring right here, and the computer has also detected rotation inside of the storm just northeast of Birmingham. And it looks like there's three or four, well, at least two, separate tornado warnings for this region. So there might be two actual funnel clouds seen or detected inside of that region. Overall, guys, <laughs> this is now two days of severe weather. Um, if you've been following along over on my Facebook page, let me just take you over there. And I've got a couple different pages, so you may know me from the Adepto Perfectus Dutch Sense page, you may know me from my personal page, or you may know me from the Dutch Sense page. I try to post on all three the same thing so that all my viewers get the message. Last night, there was another ionization event that occurred, and we got a screenshot of it here, so you don't have to take my word for it. I was contacted by a viewer, again, another viewer contacted me, and said, hey, you need to go check again. I know you just got done doing your live stream, but this just happened. And this was at 301 UTC, so you can subtract 6 from this, and that puts it right about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock last night. This happened. And it's a, what I would call now an ionization event. We're talking about multiple stations, NEXRAD radar stations, producing CCN, cloud condensation nuclei, ionization. It's now proved frequency can do that. And they may not know. We don't know the reason behind why they're doing this or if there is even a why, why it's happening, other than it could be an accident, too. But the deliberate nature of it, the way it happens, only certain stations, really leads us, me, the other researchers, to believe that these storms are being influenced. 
that's the best way I can say it. It's weather modification via frequency. I've been debated ad nauseum by people across the board that it's not possible. Meanwhile, it's proved. I mean, it's not even a question of whether or not it can happen. It's proved. The scientific experiments have been done. So, um, guys, this next outbreak that's getting ready to happen, let's hope it's not as severe as the last one, but this happened last night. This is almost a duplicate of what happened, well, now four nights ago, five nights ago, when this whole thing was forecast by the National Weather Service. Now, I'd like to again remind you that the Harp Ring event, the radar pulse event, happened a full 12 hours before they issued any forecast saying that there was going to be severe weather, and that broke out yesterday and today. Now 20 people dead. Do we lay it at their feet? It, it's either an accident or it's on purpose, but there's no doubt that it's happening. We're seeing it happen on radar. Radar itself producing returns that are causing weather themselves. So it's it's a radar can produce weather. This is new. This is some kind of new technology that was rolled out in 1988 when they rolled out the WSR-88 NEXRAD. Someone somewhere either figured it out or they haven't figured it out, which is even more scary to me than them actually knowing, which is, do are there a bunch of morons at the helm that have no clue that their radar stations are producing ionization, or do they know? That's what it's reduced to at this point. The days of debating this, I don't even debate the skeptics anymore. They're not even worth debating. They're denying they're denying that frequency can produce cloud condensation nuclei. Mean, meanwhile, you've got Michio Kaku coming out confirming it. You've got uh, multiple Air Force studies. You've got tests done in laboratories time after time producing the uh, CCN using frequency. Again, CCN is cloud condensation nuclei, the precursor to rain. It's that simple. So, guys, have a severe weather plan. Be ready. Be prepared just in case. You never know when it could hit. Everyone needs a severe weather plan, no matter where you live pretty much on the entire planet, unless you live in paradise or in the middle of the Sahara Desert, well, you'd even need a sandstorm forecast. So you need a severe weather plan, okay? At some point in your life, you will be affected by severe weather, every one of us. So it just makes sense just to have that plan ready and be prepared, you know, flashlights, that's just the, the basics. We're not asking you to go buy some kind of storm shelter, although if you live in an area where you don't have a basement, you might want to look around the buildings around you and find the nearest large stone structure that if a large tornado is coming, go just go take a look at Joplin from 2011. When all those houses were destroyed, there were a few buildings that were left. They, they took heavy damage, but let's say the armory, the National Guard armory stood. It was made out of, it looked like a castle. Sure, parts of it collapsed, but that was the one building that stood while all the other frame structures were wiped and steel structures. So people were even in their basements and were exited from their basements by the wind in Joplin in 2011. Now, let's hope it's not this bad this time, but you can again see, let me go ahead and turn on the, the warnings one more time. We've got metropolitan areas like Birmingham that were directly under tornado warnings. The good news is now they have expired that warning. Glad I'm checking one more time here. Just expired the Birmingham warning, and the only warning that now exists is just northeast of Birmingham. That means the areas downwind from this need to be aware, again, that that could be uh, a problem over the next several hours. Um, the next storms, you know, it's all a matter of this area here being sucked back up to the northeast. How much is it going to take off the Gulf? The harder the angle pulled north, the more intense the storms. You remember the storms in 2011 took the large S snake shape that was pulling stuff due north, and it would blast it all the way up here to Minnesota, where all the scalar squares were occurring last year, you remember? So it would pull them up to the north, and the, the harder the shear, the stronger the storm. Okay, Guys, much love. Thank you for tuning in. And the links are down below the video again, so you can monitor the severe situation all night. If something else develops over the next several hours, Let's say this develops into something severe by the morning or tomorrow afternoon. Um, once I get back from the job site, I will immediately be on and will post as many updates as I can. Much love and be safe. And if, if you're a praying person, please pray for the people who were hurt or killed and their families and how they deal with it. And if you're not a praying person, 
then think on them, will you? Seriously, maybe try to find uh, organizations that help the people in this region. You know, I know I've got a lot of extra clothes and other things that could be sent to help. Okay, much love, folks. Be safe.